Hi, so in this video we are going to talk about something we have not covered yet. Until now we have talked about what happens UI side, creating custom view components, but in Innovation Suite you can also create backend objects, for example custom REST APIs or custom commands. So what is the difference between the REST API and a command? Basically, let's say that you want to run a script and you're not interested by the result. You would just want to send an event and you don't care about the result. You just want to know if it went OK or it didn't went OK. So you just rely on the HTTP return code. So, for example, if something goes wrong, you could have a 404 or HTTP 500. And if everything goes fine, you would have HTTP 204 with no content. So, in this case, you would use a command, which is more fi um, fire and forget. If you want data sent back to you, you could use a custom REST API. Or if you want to post data, you could use a REST API. So, for example, in uh, ITSM 9 or Remedy 9, uh, you could access REST APIs through Remedy. Here, in Innovation Suite, not only you have access to the uh, standard out-of-the-box REST API, but you could create exact your own inside your application. So I'm going to show you how you can do it. So in this example, uh, it's uh, calling custom command custom REST API. So here you can see that the command has been executed and hello James, your new password is James password. So here I have James, the password is 007 and the result is James password. So let's see what it does. So the idea is that I'm calling Java command first when passing some data and I'm not expecting an answer. Then I'm calling a REST API giving James as a parameter and I want to get a password back from the REST API. The REST API is going to build a password for me and the password will be James with command password and I'm going to get the result of the REST API and I'm going to display it in a custom view component. So let's see how we can do that. So first of all, so I'm switching to IntelliJ uh, you can use Eclipse. Eclipse is working fine. Actually, most of us use Eclipse. It just uh, I'm used to the shortcut of WebStorm, so they are the same in uh, IntelliJ. So inside our project, so we have still sample library that 1705. So what do we have? So under source, until now we have worked on the web app. You have a Java folder. And inside this Java folder you have by default only this file. So the best practice is to create a package with the kind of thing you want to do. So for example command, rest, and we'll, we are going to see later service. So inside my application it's uh, basically you are going to declare pretty much like in JavaScript you declare your view component inside xmodule.js. I'm sorry for your ears. Um, So, pretty much like you declare the view component in xmodule.js or bxmodule.js, you declare, we are going to declare our comments, our REST API, and our services inside this uh, file. So, in our case, like we saw in the video, we have one command and one REST API that are called. So, we have here inside command I have a simple command and I have a simple rest class. So if you want to create a command uh, you have to create a class and extend the command coming from BMC. So com bmc services command. So you can see here that I'm expect I have two parameters username and password and the way it's working is when I'm going to send parameters to the command, so username and password, I'm going to automatically get them if I have some getters. So the getters need to be get and the parameter name starting with uppercase, so get and set 
parameter get and set for the password and I'm storing it inside username and password then I have to declare my command so using the execute method I have to implement the execute method so the execute method is a method that is going to be executed when the command is going to be called so here I have information coming from URI info that will contain my username and password my parameters don't focus too much on that this, this is standard the only thing that might be interesting for you is authorization level that valid user that means that to access to this command you need to be authenticated you need to for example an anonymous user could not access to this command you have different values like administrator, guest, valid user so you can play with that but anyway in our case the only thing I want to do when I get uh, when my command is going to be called is I'm going to just display what happens so here is my two parameters and I just dis return now in real case maybe I will launch a script maybe I will call a service maybe I will do something else but here I'm not interested with that I'm just getting the information returning now so here my class simple command I have to go in my application of Java and I have to do register class simple command dot class again I have to import it so this is my command so how is it working behind the scene so first of all you have to be logged in then in my case this is my simple command so we have the same URL which is a post and in the payload I have to pass the name of my simple command so com example command simple command so which is declared here my package name com example command simple command this is my resource type which is actually the class name then my parameters username and password james and 007 when I send that you can see I have nothing coming back from the server but it has been executed successfully 204 no content so we don't ask you to use for example $HTTP in AngularJS to call this command we are providing an object for you to, to do this one thing to know is that if you are connecting for example through uh, another system uh, when you do a post or put or modify command basically you have to pass x requested by and give a value if you don't give this value you will have an error bad request you are required to pass the x requested by with a value we can be which can be whatever you want so here for the login it's also a command as you can see but the resource type is login command so you have to give a uh, good login name and password so this is in documentation and the header same thing is requested by so this is for the command so let's see how we can call a command from the JavaScript code so the example will be uh, this one should be in rest command so like always we have a module we declare module we declare it in module.js based module.js and next module.js and so the design phase is very simple contacting so it's uh, it just has to input parameters so if we look at config.js we have two input parameters and we have one output parameters containing the result so the result being the password that would be generated so pretty much standard until now so the difference is that in the directive uh, we have a new file here a resource.js so you are not it's not mandatory to do it but the way we do it internally is when you call a command uh, HTTP or something we prefer to put that inside a factory 
So inside our resource, we have a factory, and this factory is using several things. So the first thing is you can see that we have rx command resource, so which is an object we provide to you to call a command. So instead of doing a payload like we did here, calling this URL, preparing the payload and everything, you can just call rx command resource with a type, so the type being the class name, the resource type. So here it's just stored inside uh, a constant file here. So I'm calling the command resource with a type and I'm passing some parameters. So the parameters being the username and password. So pretty much exactly like that. So as a bonus, you, so you could stop here. You could do execute and stop here. And it would work. Uh, I mean, like this, and it would work perfectly. But here, what I'm giving you is a bonus. So by default, if your command is going to fail, for example, the server is not available, the command is not correct, something like that, or your Java code is triggering an exception, we, the default error handler, we provide the innovation so it will kick in and will display, for example, a red notification message. So in case you don't want that and you want to handle the error response yourself, you can implement the object under response error. So you would get the response. So you can use rxlog, which is another object we provide to you if you want, for example, to rxlog will display something in the console from um, uh, Chrome, for example. And you can use rx server handler object, which is another object, to get the error from the response. So you don't have to pass that yourself, you can use this object to get the error code. So here you could do, for example, something else. You could, for example, send an email, uh, do some kind of failover, do so, like uh, use a dollar timeout to try again. And in this case, if you return true, if you return false, after your code is executed, our error handling system will take over. So we'll display the red pop-up saying something wrong happened. If you return true, we will not display that. Our error on the system will say, okay, s you handled it yourself, so you must have done something correctly, so we are not going to do it for you. So if you want to handle error response yourself, this is the kind of thing you can implement. So you can implement inside Rx command resource or something else. So this way, if you use that, it will return a promise. So here, for example, it's test command. And if I'm looking inside the directive, you can see that when I'm calling my resource test command with the username and password, I'm getting a promise. But here, I'm not interested in the result because a command by default is not returning anything. It's just HTTP 204, no content. So I'm just saying, Rx no I'm just using Rx notification message, which is an object from BMC to display notification message. So info is a blue one. Success would be in green, error would be in red, and so on. So here is how to call a command from, uh, to create a command in Java and to how to use it in the UI. So now I was talking about a REST API. So the REST API is working pretty much the same way. So here, simple REST API. So I'm creating a class, but this time I'm implementing RESTful resource. And here, if you're familiar with uh, uh, Java REST API, it's working pretty much the same thing. So you're declaring a path, a main path. So hello, so subpath, word, and the parameter username. This again, don't really focus about it. It's saying how you can access it once again. You can have value, valid user or some other values to tell who can access the uh, REST API. It will return back JSON. And in our case, as you can see, so I'm expecting one input parameter, username. 
and I'm going to return a test me object. So the test me is just a simple class with two properties, username and password, with two with getters and setters. So what is going to happen is I'm going to return a class and that will be passed into JSON. So inside username I'm storing the username, inside the password I'm storing the, pa the username and the string comma password. So in order to call my REST API you can see that uh, so you have to use server port slash API, the name of your application and then the main path and then the sub path hello world username. So if you do it in Postman you can see here that it's slash API uh, your application which is not the class of the Java class it's uh, really your developer ID and your application name and then the main path, sub path, parameter. So if you execute it you will get your object back in JSON so the username and the password, which are the two properties from your class. So once again you don't have really to do a dollar HTTP, pass some headers and everything. Uh, we provide an object for you in the UI. So once again let's come back to the resource and this time we are going to use a Rx resource object. So the Rx resource object is using with sub URL configuration. We need to pass the URL that is defined here. So it's com example sample library hello world. So you don't have to provide slash API. We are going to add slash API for you. Just give the rest of the URL. So this part. So here you will have application name, uh, path, the path and don't really focus about the rest just change your main URL. So once you got your resource object so we are, we are going to test our resource API we are just going to use a parameter here we pass a parameter username and automatically when you do the resource get we are going to add the parameter here James so if we take this method you can see here that I'm calling my resource the method test rest API I'm passing the username and once again it's a promise so I'm going to get the result from MA API and I'm going to map dollar scope result to the result rest API dot password and of course I'm going to broadcast the output parameter value with result to the dollar scope result and I'm going to display in the Rx notification message the username and the password so that's why here you have a Rx notification coming here your hello James your new password is and here this one is actually this field is actually mapped to the result output parameter from the view component result so that's how you consume so that's how you create a command java command java rest api and that's how you consume them from the ui but once again as you can see here i could consume them from the ui but you could use it for example for Postman or another application. So for example you could have a portal and your portal could consume a custom REST API or a custom command that you could code inside Innovation Suite. So that's pretty cool in some situation when you do interfaces between several applications that are not maybe inside Innovation Suite.